Hi, this will be a short series of videos on using the table view with Swift in iOS and creating a stretchy header for the table view, okay? I've got a, an animated GIF here to kind of show us what our end goal is. So you can see here I've got a table view, and as I drag it down, right, the table view is a list of, you know, of rows, right? And every row here has just the numbers spelled out in them, 1 through 30 or something, right? But as I drag the cells down, you can see that the header image here gets larger and stretches to fill the space. And as I scroll upward with the table view cells, this image shrinks to a minimum size, right? So it gets, you know, it stops about here, and then it doesn't get any smaller, right? So, so that's kind of our end goal. So you could just use the table view by itself, or you could follow the rest of the tutorial and do the header also, okay? So, so how are we going to do this, right? Well, let's spend the first video just setting up our, our Xcode project. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to open up Xcode and make a brand new project, and I'll call it um, Stretchy uh, Table View header, okay? And I'm going to set the language to Swift and the device to iPhone, and we can uncheck uh, Use Core Data because we're not going to use that, right? And then I'll click Next, and I'll save this into the folder here and click Create. I'm actually just going to replace my other project, okay? So here's my brand new Xcode project, and what we need to do first is set up our table view. So the first thing we'll do is we'll go to Storyboard here. I'll click on Main Storyboard, and we'll just put a table view into our, our view controller. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to open up the object palette here and find the table view on the list. So there's table view there. You can also search by typing a, you know, the, the name of something down here at the bottom, right? So I'll grab the table view, and I'll drag it into the view controller. And I'm going to snap it. So the upper corner kind of snaps into the upper corner of the table view, and then I'll grab the lower corner and stretch it all the way to the bottom, okay? Now, if you recall um, in the example, let's actually go and get it again, right? The, um, the example file here has an image at the top, and the table view cells are down here at the bottom, right? So I'm actually going to... I'm not going to make the table view look like this and leave room up here for the, um, for the image. Instead, the table view is going to fill the whole space, and we're going to use a property of the table view called the content inset. And that tell, tells table view to push its content inward, right? So the table view will take up the whole space, but we'll tell it that the top edge is going to be inset by an amount. So that'll mean that the top row will actually you know, get pushed down from the top. So it'll start down here and then scroll up, okay? So there's our setup there. So now we need to add some constraints to the, uh, to the table view. So what we'll do is with the table view selected here, we can choose um, from the little menu down here, the, um, I forget what they call this menu, the Resolve Auto Layout Issues menu. We'll click on that, and there's an option here that says Reset to, cons to Suggested Constraints. Okay, and what this does is it really just adds a constraint to each of the four edges, right? So this menu right here is the um, the uh, add new constraints menu, right? So if you had your table view selected here, you could actually just click on this, and then you could check all four of these, right? And then click add constraints, right? So that those two options do the same thing. Okay, so we got our table table view constrained, right? And we're doing that because if the you know, if we use this on, a, on an iPhone 6 or an iPhone 7 or 6 Plus or 7 Plus, right, those, are, those have different size screens, and um, adding a, these constraints that lock the edges of the table view to the edge of the screen will um, stretch our, our table view to fill a larger screen or, or shrink it to fill a smaller screen, right? Okay, so now we need a, a cell in here to display our data, right, so represent rows. The cells in the table view are reusable, so the table view is very efficient. It doesn't remember, you know, 10,000 rows of data. Instead, it just remembers enough cells to fill the screen, and then as a cell scrolls off the bottom, that cell gets recycled up to the top, and the data in it is replaced with new data. So really, the computer's only remembering enough cells to fill the screen, 
and then it's just changing the data in each of those cells. So what we need is we need a reusable cell that is going to act as a prototype for all the cells that we create, right? So I'll find the table view cell here in the um, in the the pal object palette, and I'll drag it into our table view, and there it is now. It's a little hard to see it, but it's this first row right here where it says prototype cell. And make sure you have that cell selected. Um, sometimes if you do this, it's kind of like you're selecting the view inside the cell, right, where it says view here. Um, if that happens, click on the table view and then click once on the cell. And then it should say table view cell at the top here. And what we want to do is we want to give this cell an identifier. So we're going to give it a name so we can, you know, we can identify this cell when we reuse it. So um, I'm going to find the identifier here under the, um, the attribute inspector, and I'll just give it the name cell, C-E-L-L, -L, right? I know it's hard to read on your screen, but it's just the word cell, right? And there we go. So now we're all set. Um, we're set here in storyboard, right? We actually have a couple other things to do. Um, so now what we need to do is we need to create an IB outlet to our table view. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go into um, View Controller Swift, and then I'll option click on Main Storyboard, and I'm going to make the screen like a little bit bigger here, like this. So I have the text really big there, right? So it's a little hard to... So it's easy to read the text, but then it's a little hard to squeeze everything in here, right? So anyway, what we need to do is create an outlet from Table View to our View Controller. So I'll make a little bit of space here um, at the top of my View Controller class. And then I'll hold the Control key, right? Or you can right click. And I'll, I'll click and drag from the table view here into the View Controller. And I'll create an IB outlet. So it says Connection Outlet, and the name will be Table View. So I'll do that, and then I'll click Connect. And then it says, you know, uh, Weak Var, or IB Outlet, Weak Var, Table View, is a type UI table view. So this is the variable that we just made, table view. Okay? So we have a couple other things to do now. Okay? Let's let's close this for a moment, right? So I'll close that bit by clicking the button here. And what I want to do is I want to declare this class as a UI table view um, data source and delegate. So I'll put a comma here and say UI table view delegate and UI table view uh, data source table view wait table view uh, where is data source there is delegate tab bar where is that guy let me go finally back up hold on a second um, I misspelled it let's see UI table view data source there we go right okay so we got the data source. This is going to give us an error because data source requires that we include two methods, right? So let's get rid of that error by adding those two methods, right? Um, and, so, and then and then we need to a couple do a little bit of setup before this will work, right? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to the bottom of my class here, right? Right before the curly brace here, but after you know did receive memory warning, and I'll say uh, table view. And what I want, actually, let me do this. Let's do a number, type, start typing a number of rows and sections. We want this method table view, number of rows and section. Okay. And this is going to return the number of cells that we have. Okay. The other method we need is called cell for row at index path. That's actually table view, cell for row at index path. But if you just start typing cell for row, it should show up. So this is the one we want. So this first method, number of rows, um, needs to return an integer to tell the table view how many rows are available, right, or how many rows it should display. The second method returns one table view cell, which in our case will be a copy of the one cell prototype that we created, right, for each row of data that we want to display. So we're going to have to type some code here and here. So just leave that alone for the moment. And let's go back up to the top. So that satisfies the problem here, right? So our next thing that we need to do is we need to set up the, the data source and delegate and make sure that our class 
is the data source and delegate for the table view or, or make the table view aware that this class of view controller is the data source and the delegate or its data source and delegate. So we'll do that in view did load. So I'm going to go to view did load here and what we'll do is we'll say um, table view dot uh, data source equals self and table view dot delegate equals self. Okay, so that sets up our table view. And now we just have to put some data in the table view, right? Um, so let's add an array. So we'll say array. Actually, let's do uh, var array. So I went up to the top of my class here and I'll define a variable array. And our array will be an array of strings. And we'll initialize it this way. So this initializes an empty array of type string. So now we've got an array. And what we want to do is um, down here for every um, for every item in the array of string, we want to tell it tell table view that that's how many items are in the table view, right? So you know, in other words, we want to count the array and tell the table view that's the number of rows, right? So what we'll do is we'll go here and we'll say return array dot count, okay? And then what we want to do is for each string in the array, we want to return one table view cell that contains that string as its text label, okay? So right here in cell for row at index path, what we'll do is we'll get a cell by, so I'll just say let cell equal, and then we'll go to the table view, and table view has a method called dq reusable cell with identifier. Oops, I did table, so this would be table view, dq reusable cell with identifier. I know that's a long name, but if you if you just type dq, d-e-q-u, right, that should give you the, the method, dq reusable cell with identifier string. And if you recall, our identifier string was cell, right? So um, if I look at storyboard again, maybe I can, I guess I can't make that any wider, right? But if I look at storyboard here and we click on our cell here and we go back to the identifier here, you can see cell was the name. So if you used an uppercase C, then you'll have to use an uppercase C right here, right? So there's our cell. We've got our cell here. And since we're using a string, it's possible that you misspelled this. So it's actually going to return an optional cell to us. So what we'll do is I'm pretty sure that I spelled that right. So I'm just going to unwrap this with an exclamation point. Okay, so I'll just put the exclamation mark there. And then uh, what we'll do now is we'll get our cell. We'll get the text label of the cell, set it to dot text, and we'll set the text to array bracket index path dot row so the the index path gives us an uh, a way to identify elements within the table view so the index path has a section number and a row number um, our table view currently only has one section so we can ignore the section number and this is the number of the row that that this cell is going to display and so we need to give it the data that matches that row and so that'll be the item in the array that's at the same index okay so we've got that and then this method needs to return a ui table view cell so we've created a cell here we've configured our cell here and now what we'll do is we'll say return cell and that hopefully should get rid of this error here and we're pretty good, right? So right now, if we were to test, I'll switch this to um, iPhone 6S. Um, our table view will show up, but it'll be empty because we didn't put any data in the array. So currently, our array has zero items in it. So the table view kind of shows up there, but it's really just all the cells are empty. Or actually, this is it's just putting lines in there. It didn't even really show real cells you know it kind of looks like it but it's not even really showing any cells there right because we don't have any data in the array so i'll save that for the next video right and we'll pick up there so we've this is just you know the basics of setting up your table view you know feel free to come back and review this video if you want to set up a table view again